I know, I know. I swear I didn't lie to you. The MSI B550A dash, or Dash A Pro is a fantastic board, still recommend it. So why the hell am I reviewing the Extreme 4? ASRock is a partner of mine? Yeah, I wish. No, I was lucky enough to score a 1600 XT, which hopefully you've seen a review or two of that already, but that one was from ASRock, and I'm not dealing with that. Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech, and yes, we were reviewing the ASRock B550 Extreme 4 motherboard. It's, it's like a, the same thing as the Steel Legend or the Valencia or whatever. I just like this color scheme a little better, personally, and it has everything I need. So what do I need? An ASRock board, check. Two and a half gig ethernet was something kind of nice, check. We have plenty of fan headers. We have power reset with LED readout. We have two addressable RGB headers, so that was kind of a plus. Uh, decent spacing from the RAM to the first slot, so that's good. And we have USB-C in the rear, we have USB-C in the front, so that's pretty much all I need. Without further ado, let's go over the motherboard. Let's go over and start here, work our way around the board here. So first things first, thank you to Guru3D for this information. This is the same VRM as the B550 Steel Legend and the Valencia. Uh, so it says 14 power phase, it is a 12 plus two. Uh, the MOSFETs are the Vichy SIC654, they are 50 amps. Um, although it's telling me the PWM controller is six plus two, whatever that means. Uh, well, I guess we'll see if it has doublers. Uh, oh yeah, it does have doublers. So it's actually a six power phase uh, with doublers and doubler is the ISL 6617A, which is pretty honestly popular with ASRock. So you're gonna get some really solid performance. Uh, Buildsoy did a video, I'll put the link in the description below. He put a 3950X at 250 watts with no ambient calling. He barely cracked 100 degrees on the VRM. That was really impressive because I'm only pushing like 130 so we do have this up here which is kind of frustrating uh, i'm going to populate both i think we'll see what happens but whichever uh fan wise we have one two three four i messed this up last time five six seven so i probably do have seven this time uh do we have an okay good we have none up here i hate it when it's up there so three four five six seven so at least seven uh, we have a couple M.2s, we have one under here, we have one under here, this is for Wi-Fi if you want to have that. Um, we have RGB 4 pin and 3 pin, same thing down here at the bottom. We have a USB Type-C front, USB 3, we have 6 SATA, 3 gigabit, 6 gigabits per second. Postcode definitely has some uses there. Then we have your front panel, speaker, some USBs. HD audio, CMOS. I like the layout. We have enough room here uh, between the bottom here and um, PCI Express connectors. That's a plus. As you see, I have my 5100X installed, ready to go. These only have one side to them. There's pros and cons of that. Um, what I don't like with it only being one side is when you have a graphics card and you're trying to pull it up, it's going to pull out in most cases, and then you're up against a graphics card. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But so. Let's look at the rear I.O. So we have an HDMI, which is gonna be useless for us. We have two USB 3.1, USB 3.2, USB 2, USB 2, two and a half gigabits per second ethernet out, and USB, This these are both gonna be um, 3.2. So we have type C and type A. We even have a spot for Wi-Fi antennas if you do end up using this M.2, 7.1 surround. So I'll put in what the ethernet and the audio solution is there but it does have a blue kind of look to it, whereas the Valencia has a red and the Steel Legends like white and um, white and black. So plenty of coverage here. Um, I would personally not recommend using this unless you have to, because what ends up happening is this shares the cooling of the chipset. And I noticed from previously, it makes it a little bit warmer. I'd recommend populating this, um, especially if you have a graphics card here at the back plate, it's really not gonna interfere but we do have 10 mounting points, so yeah, no big deal there, but that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and wrap her up. As you can tell, a lot of ASRock would be a Pro 4 or a ITX, and this one's actually being sold, but, and then we have the Extreme 4. And what's interesting is it says on the back of your uh, Ryzen 3 and 4000 series CPUs, and the 4000 series APUs were only OEM. But I've actually had to, I've played with it a little bit, and ASRock Polychrome RGB, the beta, 
does work with the board and the memory, so I am happy to see that. I did actually get a little bit faster uh, precision boost overdrive. I'm getting about 4.45 gigahertz on all cores, which is good. My Cinebench scores went up by about 100, 50 to 100, and Blender went down to two minutes and 36 seconds. So that was good. Um, bad news, I couldn't get the memory to 3,000 megahertz CL18, which is 18, 22, 22, 22, and 42, like I did on the MSI board, but it is running 3,600 in that capacity, so that's fine. Interesting to know is since this board has four USB 2, which kind of sucks to be honest, my USB 3 hub with four things connected into it was causing problems. It kept freezing, uh, not the computer, but like the inputs. So after I reloaded the system, which I probably should have done anyway, didn't fix it, then I realized I'm using USB 2. So just food for thought, that's what kind of stinks about the four USB 2 ports is that, but. All things considered, a uh, one-to-one, one, a USB 3 and a USB 2 would be fine. So uh, it did come flash uh, with a BIOS that was new enough, 1.1, which worked fine. And that's pretty much it. So it's a good board. Um, I have no problems with it. It's not the greatest value, but it has every feature I want, every last feature. So to me, I spent $145 on Amazon, what, what do they call this, um, warehouse, Thanks to you, this product has a second life. So that's good. I'm helping the environment there, I guess. So if you want to buy this, link in the description below. Like me if you liked it, and dislike if you dislike, leave a comment and get subscribed. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see y'all later on down the road.